Hey everybody, it's Jason here from Chastity.com. We got a question that came in from a young woman and she asked, she said, my boyfriend says that he wants to do sexual stuff to make sure we're compatible before we get married. And I don't really feel comfortable with some of it. What should I say to him? Well, what you should say to him is I don't really feel comfortable with it. And then watch his reaction. Does he get petulant and whiny? Does he get distant? Does he get cold? Does he get manipulative or abusive? I mean, this will tell you volumes about a guy because the fact is sex is not a tryout. I mean, if you fail to kind of throw him sexually, will he love you any less? Then if so, then you can be certain that he never loved you to begin with. And people say, well, come on. I mean, if you're gonna buy a car, don't you test drive it before you buy it? You do, and, and what do you do with that car in five years when a better looking one comes out? You dump the old model, you get the new one. That's why you test drive things, you can't do that to people. Because let's say, if you engage in his little compatibility test, whatever that might mean, and look at the possible outcomes. Let's say you, you fail the test and you don't quite pass. What's gonna happen? Is he gonna like sit you down and say, you know, I really appreciate your effort, you know, but you didn't make the team. I was hoping your skill set would be more advanced, but you were kind of more intermediate to beginner. I just wish you had maybe subscribed to Cosmo magazine a couple years longer so you could really know what a man truly wants. I mean, if this happens, not only do you lose the relationship, you lose your self-respect in the process. But let's say you engage in his compatibility test and, and you pass, like you pass with flying colors. What's he gonna say? Like, congratulations, you know, you made the team. Great, I mean, you just won a guy for the wrong reasons. Because he, if he stays with you because you're sexually compatible, then what happens, you know, is that he's not really staying with you because of who you are, he's staying with you because of how you please him. But what happens, you know, five years from now when he has a secretary that maybe seems more sexually compatible with him? I think what often happens before marriage is that sexual compatibility in the bedroom obscures and covers up a serious lack of compatibility outside of the bedroom. It's like if you want to read a book and someone shoves it too close to your face, you can't see. It, it, it's too blurry. You have to pull it away to see those words crisply. And it's the same thing with the value of the human relationships. Human sexuality not only blinds you, it binds you. It gives you that sense of closeness where you can't critically look at serious aspects of the relationship. That's why sex and marriage is ideal, because it makes you less judgmental of one another, but prior to marriage, it can be pretty dangerous. To all of this, someone might say, okay, well, fine and good, but how do you know, though, if you're gonna be sexually compatible with the future spouse? Because don't you kind of want that part of your relationship to kind of be in sync? Well, I think you absolutely do, but here's my theory. I think a person will make love as they love. If their love before marriage is selfless, it is affectionate, it is playful, it is aggressive, it is selfish, it is violent, whatever those personal tendencies may be, will find themselves manifesting in all aspects of the relationship, including the sexual ones. And it isn't just naivete of, oh, well, things will figure themselves out in marriage. I remember when my wife and I were engaged, we got a phone call from MSNBC. They wanted to be on this Phil Donahue show like two weeks before we got married. So. We flew out to New York City and they picked us up in a limo and drove us to the studios. And before you know it, we're on live nationwide TV. And we were there with a whole panel of people, one guy from the NBA who was saving sex for marriage and people that didn't agree with our viewpoints. And I remember being on the show and they took a live call. And this man said, uh, yeah, I've got a question there uh, for your guests on the show, that engaged couple that's about to get married in a few weeks. He said, honestly, I just think they're naive and they're gonna get married, they're not gonna know how to perform in the bedroom and it's just gonna be a disaster. <laughs> and I kind of laugh because I mean, like perform? You know, like is this America's next great talent TV show? Like, you know, I think that was a miserable performance. Well, I think he tried really hard. Let's give him five stars. Like, this is not about a performance. This is about a total gift of self. If there's judgment going on there, something's off because 
really, what's the worst thing that could happen? It isn't perfect the first time and you gotta try again later? Well, well, gee darn, right? This isn't about being naive. It's about being confident in your love. Now, to all of this, someone might say, okay, well, fine and good, but look, sexual incompatibility is a real issue. I mean, what, what happens if people get married and he's into this and she's not into that? Or maybe she struggles with frigidity when it comes to sexuality, or he's into everything. Well, I think sometimes sexual frigidity or certain sexual interests are the fruit of a deeper root that really needs to be addressed. Like maybe the stuff that she's a little frigid toward, she should be, you know, because maybe it's the result of his addiction to pornography of things that he's grown accustomed to that he expects her to fulfill in marriage. When in reality, marriage is not the fulfillment of porn. Porn is the distortion of authentic human love. I mean, maybe the sexual frigidity is the result of sexual abuse that was never truly healed. And so if you struggle with pornography or the wounds of sexual abuse, find counseling. If you go to womenmadenew.com, you can find a list of counselors nationwide. Dig into this prior to marriage to resolve these deeper issues instead of thinking that marriage is gonna be some car wash that takes it all away. But in the end, I'll tell you, marriage is gonna be hard work. There's gonna be times where you are not sexually on the same page or perfectly in sync or that's gonna happen. And you need to be able to anticipate that and maturely work through those struggles because it takes time. I mean, it takes a lifetime. Not only get to know a person, but to know how to love them rightly. And honestly, if your boyfriend does not have enough confidence in your ability to work through this issue, well, maybe then the real issue isn't your deficiency of sexual skills. Maybe the real issue is he has a deficient understanding of authentic human love. And so I'll leave you with this. It's a quote from G.K. Chesterton. He says this, if Americans can be divorced for incompatibility of temper, I cannot conceive why they are all not divorced. I have known many happy marriages, but never a compatible one. The whole aim of marriage is to fight through and survive the instant where incompatibility becomes unquestionable, for a man and a woman as such are incompatible. And I think this might be why the, the word compatible, the etymology comes from Latin, compati, which means to suffer with. Lasting marriages aren't because you just fit so perfectly, they're because you show up and you fight for your marriage when things get tough. It's gonna require patience, sacrifice, self-control, all these things. But love is not afraid of those things Love is those things. And so, what do you think? Leave a comment below, thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And most importantly, put your own questions in the comment sections underneath, and uh, we'll try our best to answer those questions. God bless you, and keep your standards high as heaven.